Well, it's very nice to have an agreement uh, on a target to be well below two degrees. But what the countries brought to the table was for a kind of three and a half degree uh, world. Uh, so the rhetoric doesn't match um, what they brought to the table. And we don't have a legally binding mechanism to ensure that we get there. Uh, we also have issues that there's an assumed successful carbon capture and storage implicit in the, the scenarios brought to the table. So I'm not very optimistic about that uh, because in a three degree plus three degree world, uh, we lose the ice sheets. And therefore, because that's such a devastating effect, we in the next round and as, as this goes forward, we need mechanisms that ensure that we will have not just the emissions reductions to take us well below two degrees, uh, but also atmospheric carbon drawdown technologies that's really kind of a missing part of the conversation. No, I think I, I agree with the leaders who said it's a historic moment. And being involved in the negotiations and talking with various countries, I genuinely felt the planet finally spoke together with one voice for one Earth. Remember at the opening of the meeting, Ban, Ban Ki-moon said, there is no plan B because there is no planet B. So just terrifying. Finally, we have overcome the big hurdle. And having said that, the real work starts now. Where we go from here is that we now need to do the work. But I think the most, the most significant or the most important thing that has been achieved is, is in terms of recognition. So taking, taking developing countries seriously, taking it really seriously that, that even two degrees might be a real threat and, and even the warming that we have now is, is already a threat, especially in developing countries, and recognizing that because they originally brought the 1.5 degrees in the discussion and that is now recognized, I think that is, that is a huge achievement. Well, um, for me, a very interesting aspect of the uh, agreement that came out of Paris is um, what happens with loss and damage in terms of that's now being separated from adaptation. So supposedly the funding that we've been talking about uh, with adaptation is now separate from loss and damage. So loss and damage is really standing out on its own. So that's dealing with the effects of climate change that people can't adapt to. and. I think it's, it's quite interesting to see it stand out on its own there. It suggests that really there's, there's going to be a, a mechanism developed to, to deal with that. Sort of, a, you can think of it maybe as an insurance. The other aspect of that is, is a, a very explicit statement that this is not liability or compensation. And so um, it's still unclear, I think, coming out of Warsaw through Cancun and, and Paris, exactly what loss and damage is under the UN process. Um, so that's going to be an interesting thing to keep an eye on over the next few years. Okay, well, overall I'm very optimistic. You know, I, I think it's a landmark deal. I think it's great that the nations of the world can get together and sort of commit to how important this issue is and to do something about it. And I think even though we don't exactly have the level of commitments necessary by countries to get us to these ambitious targets, the fact that we have some pretty substantial commitments already is, is something not to be neglected. I mean, a lot of the really worst climate impacts can happen at some of these higher end, you know, four or five C warming scenarios. And I think that the existing commitments that we have already uh, reduce the likelihood of those significantly. And, and we really shouldn't minimize that. That said, we still have a long way to go between what countries have committed to do and what countries say they want to achieve in terms of targets. And I think that the targets are in some ways more ambitious than a lot of folks have publicly realized or, or sort of stated so far, you know, the, the language around what countries are willing to do and the actions that they're actually taking uh, don't really follow, put us on a pathway that gets us to these ambitious 2C or 1.5C targets because we would need such rapid, particularly for 1.5C, we need such rapid decarbonization 
um, you know, we'd have to essentially peak global emissions within the decade and have net zero global emissions by 2050 to reach a 1.5C target. And I don't think anyone is really talking about, at least none of the politicians are talking about actions that would actually get us to that. And I, and I think that divide is problematic. Um, we do have this ratcheting strategy that should help get us down. Part of the problem, though, is that particularly for a 1.5C world, we don't have much time to ratchet. And by the time we come back to revisit this in five years, uh, we're almost going to have passed the, the period at which global emissions could need to peak to get us to those sort of scenarios. And so I think there's a lot more work that needs to be done in the future on helping policymakers better understand the implications in terms of energy that gets us to these sort of climate scenarios and, and have countries talk more realistically about what sort of actions they need to take to get us there. It's quite a landmark. I mean, we know that there are several components of the climate system that uh, exhibit some threshold behavior, um, the Antarctic ice sheet being one of them. Um, and these are the so-called tipping elements in the climate system. And limiting global warming to well below two degree, what is essentially what, what the climate agreement says, um, will significantly reduce the risk of crossing these thresholds in the climate system. And um, it also makes, it makes a difference in terms of the sea level commitment that we're facing. So um, in terms of sea level rise, we really need to think of um, longer timescales, so beyond 2100, and um, limiting global warming to well below 2 degrees or even 1.5 degrees will significantly reduce um, the sea level rise that we're facing from Antarctica.